and welcome to the latest episode of the Good Dram Show with me, Chris Goodrum. As you can see, back to the usual format. No cigar tonight, as they say. So, what goodies have I got to uh, to show you this evening? Well, we're tasting Glen Caddam. Now, I really like Glen Caddam. Um, I think the uh, personally, I think the ten-year-old is around about thirty odd quid, just a bit over. Is you know really very very good value for money. Um, Fifteen-year-old at about sort of 46, 47, You know, again, you know, pretty good value for um, uh, for the age statement. So that'll be interesting to see how uh, they stack up against these two. As you can see, no bottles because these um, rummaged through the uh, the boxes of uh, of samples and have pulled out a couple of. Uh, single cask independent bottlings which I will um, introduce in due course. So on to a bit of uh, a bit of history, a bit of waffle should we say. Um, the distillery itself uh, was founded in uh, 1825 uh, in the town of Brekin in the uh, in the highlands of Scotland and it's quite unusual um, because between the period of it being founded and 2000 when the then owners Allied de Mec, um decided to mothball it, it had been in pretty much constant um, production. It hadn't been closed, it passed through a few owners like most of the distilleries had but you know it had been in sort of pretty much constant uh, constant production. Um, Allied de Mec at the time uh, of mothballing it uh, apparently had plans uh, to close it completely um, but in 2003, instead, they decided to, to sell it to the, the current owners, um, Angus Dundee Distillers Limited, um, which I would like to thank uh, for sending me the samples of um, the 10 and 15 year old. Um, the site itself, or the distillery itself, should we say, uh, houses around about sort of 23,000 uh, odd casks. Um, and the oldest, I believe, sort of dates back to to 1978. I have tasted the uh, release they did from 1978, um, and obviously, you know, if you want to look at uh, my tasting notes of that, they're on my WordPress blog. But I don't have a sample of that this evening, so it's just the 10 and the 15. Um, and one final interesting fact, if you're a, an anorak about uh, Glen Caddam, is that. Um, unusually, they fill their casks um, at 68% uh, as the spirit comes off the still, rather than uh, as most of the uh, distilleries tend to do, sort of uh, reduce the ABV to 63, 63.5%. Um, whether theoretically that should allow the spirit to sort of, you know, mature that sort of extra length of time, and indeed the two um, samples. From uh, the independents that we've got here are both 20 and 21 years old, so um, it will be interesting to see how uh, the, the spirit actually evolves. So um, I think that's enough waffle. Um, time to uh, to do some tasting then. Right. Okay. Uh, Ten-year-old Glen Caddam first. Um, like I said, I think it's a really good value for money malt. Um, and I, I really, really rate this, I really like it. So um, uh, without uh, further ado, I'll stick my nose in the glass. Mm, wonderfully fruity, really big, tropical. Um, it's got some, some American oak, uh, slightly, very slightly sawdusty oak, um, which I suppose is unusual considering it's only 10 years old, but a little bit of grist, some barley. There's a there's a lovely um, citrus sort of lime uh, note coming out, which which kind of balances the the fact that it is quite a big fruity malt. Um, and sometimes you know big fruity malts can be a little bit sort of you know overwhelming and need something to basically. Um, just give it a bit of balance, you know, whether that's a sort of a citrusy note or some salinity or what have you. Um, and this this certainly has it. Lovely perfume, a little bit of a little bit of dried apricot maybe now. Um, but uh, it's it's all about the fruit and the barley. And um, oh, 
luscious, really very, very nice. Okay, uh, and um, on to the palette then. smooth. Lots of soft bananas, apricots, subtropical fruit, all big, very, very juicy, very, very mouth filling. And then, then you get a lovely hit of spice, sort of dried, crumbly spices. And finally, the, um, the American oak sort of comes through with uh, um, a reasonable degree of, uh, of vanillins. Not too much bitterness on the, on the aftertaste, which is quite pleasant and just about the right amount of alcohol to um, to give it uh, you know a nice um, slight piquancy um, and you know balance that up quite nicely so um, yeah okay it's kind of front-loaded it has to be said with with the fruit and does tail but you know I think I really like that I mean that's that's a, a pleasant um, you know summer malt and as it's summer although it's raining um, <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Um, I think that's, uh, that's rather, rather enjoyable. Right, okay, uh, on to the 15 year old. Well, what are we expecting from the 15 year old? Well, hopefully um, we're expecting more of the same, more of the, the lush tropical fruit, but a little bit more oak this time. Um, and I've, I've tasted the 15 on, on a couple of occasions, and the first time I tasted it, I wasn't overly enamoured. It has to be said. It, it was. It was too much oak. That it kind of unbalanced it and clamped down on all that um, wonderful tropical fruit. Um, the second time I tasted it, I thought the balance was, you know, a lot better. That the oak was was more subservient um, and um, you know, allowed the sort of the the, the fruitiness of the uh, the malt to come through. So let's let's see what the nose uh, gives us then, shall we? Now, yeah, it's a bit drier. Um, this, it's still got a lovely perfume to it. It's not so voluptuous now. As there is a little bit more noticeable oak and that sort of sawdusty kind of note, which you tend to get in, in, in quite old uh, bourbon cask um, whiskies, is, is now more prevalent. Again, there's a, there's a little bit of, of, of rose petal. Um, slight a very slight boiled sweet note and and the the fruit is is, is lovely and tropical like I said and, and it's just starting to turn a little bit a little bit of dried fruit is now creeping in which is you know what you would expect with um, uh, sort of the oxidization giving it uh, that kind of coat character but oh yeah that is good that is lovely I mean the, the the quality is, sun is, is stunning um, and mm, I love that, I love the oak and it's just not, not too overpowering, it's not too much oak, again you know the balance is, is just about spot on. Yeah getting a little bit of that, uh, that um, lime citrus but not a huge amount but there is a little bit of it still there. Mm. Right. Okay. Let's uh, let's see if the uh, the palate is as good as the nose, then, shall we? Oh, that's lovely. A little bit more milky now to start off with. Yes, you can you can sense and taste that uh, there's more oak and it has sort of almost starting to sort of put the um, uh, the voluptuous fruit into a bit of a sort of an oak shell shall we say but it's still there and um, it, it does balance there's a little bit more bitterness now uh, coming through on the end but gives it a little bit of sort of like um, coffee very light coffee um, and you know still some lovely sort of soft spices but um, I think, I think you, you ha it's not, I'm not saying it's a style you have to particularly like, but uh, you obviously have to uh, like 
um, whiskies that sort of have a little bit more oak character to them. It's still very mouthfilling, still very generous, um, and really, really silky, really smooth. Um, so, yeah, that's that, that's a big thumbs up for, for, for both of those, I think. So, yeah, really nice. Right, okay, uh, on to the first of the two independents. I thought it would be interesting to sort of, like, um, see how... Uh, a single independent bottling, a single cask, uh, stacks up against the distillery. In theory, um, it should display, you know, the same character as the distillery. But obviously, being a single cask, it obviously, you know, you have nuances and things like that. This is um, a 1990 distillation uh, bottled by uh, A.D. Rattray uh, back in um, ooh, ooh, February 2011. So. Uh, unfortunately, neither. Well, this certainly this one is uh, is is no longer available. Um, for those uh, of you that like to know these things, uh, it was bottled at fifty eight point one, and the cask number was five nine eight seven. So, um, shall we see um, if this is similar or different or whatever? Now, yeah, there's there's a lot more, a lot more alcohol, obviously. Um, it's not as fruity, um, which you know I was expecting. You know, it's 20, uh, 21 years old, twenty or twenty years old, as the case may be. Um, and there's there's more kind of dried barley. Still, you know, it's got that 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 lime uh, citrus note, um, but uh, and and the spices. It's uh, you know lovely spicy slightly gristy uh, slightly dusty um, but you can you can sense that you know that the fruit has still got a sort of a tropical like veneer to it although it's not as voluptuous as I was saying uh, or as youthful um, and um, oh, it's just got some lovely depth to it I mean this 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 was a fabulous cask it has to be said I mean it really sort of lasted Mm. Bit of bit of uh, rose petal now, um, and some floral notes, um, but it's 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 a lot more spicier now. With that sort of dusty spice note, mm. yeah, that that was that was a good cast. That was a seriously good cast. Okay, um, power time. Lot more oak, obviously more alcohol, a lot drier, but still, the, the it's you know kept the essence of the uh, the tropical fruit distillery character. Plenty of spice, um, very very long, very broad still. A little bit of coffee, um, quite succulent still. A, a very very nice. I mean, um, ordinarily I'd, I'd obviously put a little drop of water with it, but. Uh, um, as you can see, there was only uh, a dribble left in the in the in the bottle. Um, no, I mean that, that that's that's a lovely Glen, old Glencadam. Um, it doesn't reek of maturity. Um, maybe it is a case of the fact that you know they fill it at a, a slightly higher ABV, allows it to sort of you know age uh, a little bit longer. Um, who knows? Um, but you know, I think. I think that's uh, that's a, a, a lovely single cask uh, bottling of Glen Cadam. So, hmm. hats off to Jura Retray on that one, I think. And finally, this is uh, a Douglas Lang OMC bottling of Glen Cadam, um, bottled at fifty percent, like uh, all of the OMC range. Uh, was distilled in uh, nineteen ninety, like. Uh, the Jura Rattray bottling, uh, but bottled in um, sort of April 2012. Um, I, I think it's still available, although uh, I opted not to uh, to stock this particular bottling. Um, 
and uh, I think, uh, well, let's stick those in the glass, shall we? Now, it's it's gone a little bit too old now. Um, I mean, it's surprising. It's only about a year older than than the Dura Rattray bottling, but the, the the tropical fruit really has has kind of gone. Um, it's you kind of get a lot of old sort of um, barley husks, um, still some pleasant spice, but it's it's starting to get a little bit spirity, uh, certainly at, at at the edges, and um, I think you can sort of safely say that that uh, it's. You know, it's better days were, were behind it, should we say? Um, I mean, there is a, there is a there is, I mean, there is some fruit still left. I mean, it's not you know completely and utterly dead, should we say? But I mean, there is a touch of banana. But it is it's it's all about that sort of dried barley husk. And I mean, you know, if you, if you like that, then then you know, it's a, a bottling for you. But for me, it just doesn't. It hasn't retained the voluptuous fruit, and certainly not to the degree that the uh, the Duratre bottling had. So, right, okay, um, let's see what the uh, palate is like then, shall we? Very dry. The oak really has kind of like come in on um, the uh, the fruit it's it's got a little bit of perfume still got a little bit of that sort of you know maybe rose petally floral character but really the fruit has, has just been sort of like you know well and truly crushed by by the oak although in saying that it's not particularly bitter on the finish it is a little bit on the short side um, but like I was saying I don't think it's not a bad malt um, I think it's it's certainly you know a malt that uh, uh, people you know certain, some people would would quite enjoy, but I think it goes to show that uh, you know every cask has its uh, uh, optimum bottling point, shall we say? And, and personally, I feel I think this is just starting to go sort of slightly over. So um, it just goes to show that not every cask of whiskey is going to live forever. So. Okay, uh, shall we sum these up then? Um, Frank Adam, you know, a really good distillery, really um, consistent distillery. Um, you know, there, there are not many distilleries. Um, I mean, you know, possibly Lefroig and um, Saberfeldi, for example. Um, that you know, you basically, you know, when you look at the tin, you see the name, you know what you're going to get to a certain extent. I mean, okay, so the uh, the OMC bottling was a little bit old, but you know, certainly not uh, not horrible uh, by uh, any uh, any means. Um, so you know, the ten year old, you know, about thirty quid, you can't go wrong with that. You know, as long as you sort of love overtly sort of um, tropical, rich, big, fruity malt whiskies, um, you know, that's that that's a great whisky to go for. The fifteen year old, uh, a little bit more oak. Um, Possibly my, my my favorite of the of the two, um, you know. Again, about sort of forty six quid. Really can't argue with that, to be honest with you. Um, and you know, whenever uh, customers come in the shop and they're, they're looking for, you know, uh, should we say a safe style of whiskey, then you know the the Glen Adams often one I go for. I mean, it's it's not exactly the, the world's most well known of distilleries and. You know, it does need uh, selling, should we say? But you know, um, I, I certainly uh, believe in the quality of what of what they're producing, and you know, are quite happy to sell that uh, um, whiskey. Incidentally, you know, if uh, if you fancy trying it, you know, both of them are available uh, on our website www.gauntlys.com, um, and um, you know, you can read my tasting notes on my WordPress blog. Um, and, and finally, the, the, the two independents. Um, obviously, the, the Jura Rattray was the, uh, the outstanding of the, uh, the two independent bottlings, and unfortunately, that's uh, no longer available. You know, if you bought it last year, then you know, hats off, you got a great whiskey. Um, the Old Malt Cast bottling, it was, yeah, you know, like I said, not a bad bottling. It was just a little bit too old, in my personal opinion. There are people that obviously. Uh, like that kind of style but for me 
uh, it had lost the um, the, the fruitiness uh, uh, that um, the other bottlings uh, showed, and you know, and it just started to sort of dip down, you know. Um, so you know, you kind of pays your money and sort of takes your choice. But uh, like I was saying, you know, you see Glen Cadam on the label, and you know, you you know you're going to get you know a good quality malt whiskey. So um, like I said, if 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 uh, if that's um, uh, whetted your appetite to try it like I said go along to our website and uh, get yourself a bottle so in the usual tradition uh, I guess that's uh, all I have to say so uh, I'd just like to hope that uh, you've enjoyed watching the show and uh, I will bid you um, good dramming takes I did it in one take well almost one take shall we say sorry